Hi everyone, in today's tutorial video, I'll be briefly explaining to you what Polkadot Blockchain Network is and how staking works on this blockchain. I will explain in brief their NPOS staking model, who are the validators and nominators on the network, the percentage rewards that you can gain from staking, and the pros and cons for staking on this network. My true objective, however, is to show you how to safely install and set up their mobile Polka wallet and walk you through how to stake your DOT tokens. Now, Polkadot is a third generation blockchain network that claims to be scalable and customizable while offering cross chain interoperability. This is all maintained by a transparent governance model which allows the chain to be easily upgradable without hard forking. All blockchains on Polkadot are connected to what is called the Relay Chain. They all run in parallel with each other and that is why they are called parachains. The native token of the Polkadot ecosystem is called the DOT and it can be used for transactions and staking. It can also be used in the governance voting process. Polkadot uses what they call a nominated proof of stake model. Validators are those who run the nodes and the nominators are the people like me and you who are DOT holders and want to stake our tokens for the best returns and also vote on changes to the network. Now it is important to note that existing blockchains like Ethereum and Bitcoin can all become parachains to the Polkadot blockchain. Now let's talk about staking rewards and how they are distributed. We can first head over to www.stakingrewards.com to give ourselves an estimate based on a few factors. For the purpose of this video, let's assume that we have a thousand dot to start with, which works out to be approximately $4,700 at the time of this video. Now if you scroll down, you click on the calculations tab and you will see a list of parameters which you can change and see how it will affect your staking rewards. So the first thing I want to check would be the provider fees. Suppose you choose a validator who charges a commission of 4%. You can see here on the right that you have a percentage return of 7.45% which you can then compound to increase it to 7.74%. Now this should give you an annual return of around 77 dot which at the current price works out to be $365, basically a dollar a day. If you scroll down, the website provides for you a breakdown of how much rewards you're going to get daily, weekly, monthly or yearly. But before I go, I also want to point out this slider here. This slider tells you the total amount of DOT staked on the network and if the amount increases, you notice that your rewards decrease. Likewise. If the total amount of DOT stick on the network decreases, you get increased overall rewards. Now let's go back and talk about staking in general. There are a few important things that you should know about the Polkadot staking reward mechanism. The first thing that you should know is that pool validators are all paid the same reward. So it is in your best interest to choose the most reliable validators with the least amount of stake in order to maximize your rewards. I have to stress that I mean reliable because if your chosen validator goes offline for any extended period of time or they are malicious toward the network, then your rewards get slashed drastically. To explain what I mean in the first point, here on the right, I have two hypothetical examples courtesy of the Polkadot wiki page. Validator pool A has 600 DOT tokens staked among four persons Jin, Sam, Anson and Bobby, while pool validator B has 400 DOT staked between Alice, Peter, John and Kitty. By comparing the two images, it is clear to see that those members of pool B are receiving more rewards for every DOT they stake in the same amount of time. So as I said before, it is in your best interest to find the pools with the least amount of DOT staked. But also remember to take into account the commission charges for each of the validators. So that is something that you have to bear in mind if you want to maximize your rewards. 
Now the third point I would like to bring up is that if you are in a validator pool that has more than 64 nominators, then that pool is considered as oversubscribed and only the top 64 nominators will actually be receiving the rewards. So in other words, if you are in a pool with 100 other persons who are staking and the amount that you stake does not fall within the top 64, then you and the other 35 persons are not going to get any rewards. Now this could possibly change in the future by a referendum, but the overall goal seems to be that they want us to spread out the staking so that all the validator pools over time have a relatively equal amount of people staking. And this is done to maximize decentralization. Now we're on to point number four. On the Polkadot network, after you've unstaked your dot, there is a lockup period of 28 days before you can have access to them. Now this is nothing too uncommon for proof of state blockchains such as Cosmos, Tezos and Icon which all have varied lockup periods. However, that doesn't mean that I'm a fan of this mechanism as there are times where I would like to simply trade my tokens in an instant. Now this last point I'll admit that I'm not 100% certain of but it seems that you have a time limit to claim your rewards. 84 days to be exact and if you don't you run the risk of losing some, if not all, of your rewards. Sorry if I went on a bit too long about the technicals, but I would say that you should know what you are getting yourself into. Now let's move on to the wallets now. Here is a list of supported wallets for Polkadot. Many of them will support storing your dot, but not all of them will support staking. For this particular tutorial, I said I will be using the Polka wallet. Now I will leave a link in the description below so you guys can go to the correct website. But the website you should be going to is polkawallet.io and this is the web page that you should see. When you scroll down you begin to learn more about the wallet itself as well as its many features. Now this wallet supports storing many of the Polkadot assets, you can stake your dot, you can participate in democracy and even has cross-chain compatibility with other blockchains. If you go here in the top right hand corner to click download, you'll be taken to the bottom of the website where you can download this wallet for either iPhone or Android. Now since I have an Android device, I may click this option and it will carry me to a new page where you can download the APK file directly. However, for most people, you may want to download it directly from the Google Play Store. And here you can see that I've already installed the device on my phone. Now it's time to open the app. Now this should be the first screen you see when you open the app and we're going to click on create account. Now this is where you will enter the name of your wallet as well as the password. Now I'm going to use a simple password for this demonstration but please remember to make your password secure. Now we are being reminded here to back up our wallet by writing down the 12 word mnemonic phrase. Please remember to keep this phrase safe and do not take any screenshots or share it with anyone as this phrase signifies ownership of your assets on this wallet. These are our 12 words. I'm going to write them down now and once I'm finished I'm going to click next. Now on this screen I'm being tested to prove that I've written down my words correctly. And to do that, I must enter them back in a precise order. Coin, faculty, pulse, panda, elder, layer, danger, gossip, boy, vivid, sick, and order. And I click next. Now by default, you should open up in a Polkadot wallet. But just in case, you can go to the top right hand menu button and you'll see a list of other wallets that this particular wallet can support. You can store your Polkadot as well as your Kusama on this wallet, but here you also find that you have Akala Mandela as well as Lamina Turbulence. These last two projects are still in testing phase, but it's good to know that your wallet will be able to support them when they are fully released. But let's go back to the Polkadot wallet. On the main page, you should see four tabs on the bottom. Right now we are in the Assets tab 
but you also have the staking tab which we'll get more into detail later then there's a governance as well as the profile where you can manage your addresses you can change the node that you're connected to you can update your wallet and if you go to manage account you can change the name and password for your wallet you can export the account and you can even delete your account which I'll do now I'm gonna come back with my real wallet and show you guys how to receive DOT and stake it so this is my other wallet and I'm gonna send some DOT from my Binance account to this wallet so the first thing I want to do is click on the DOT asset and in this new tab I'm gonna click receive now this is my receiving address and QR code which I'm going to copy and then I'm going to head over to Binance to withdraw my DOT. Now I must say Binance is a wonderful exchange and if you guys haven't signed up as yet, you can feel free to use my affiliate links which are in the description below. That way we can both earn some commission on our trading fees. So the next thing I'm going to do is paste the address that I copied earlier into this field and click withdraw. And once I'm finished with this verification process, I should receive the dot in my wallet. I head back over to my wallet and I just wait for the transaction to be completed. The transaction was successful. So we go back to the main tab and we go to staking. On the left, you should see a plus icon that says bond funds. You click that and on this screen, you are shown the amount of DOT that you can stake minus the transaction fee. You can also change some settings with regards to how you receive your rewards. You can either compound your rewards, that means that when you receive them, they become automatically staked, or you can have them in your account where you can withdraw or you can send them to someone else. Now there's supposed to be a slight difference between a stash account and a controller account, but for this wallet, they are one and the same. For me, I'm going to compound my rewards. I'm going to choose option number one. I'm going to type in the number of dot that I would like to stake. And submit the transaction. Now you can speed up the transaction by adjusting the amount of dot that you tip. You click sign and submit and you enter your password. And the transaction is skewed. Honestly, the transaction only took about 2 seconds to complete and this particular wallet I believe connects you to the best validators but I have to do some more research on that. But there you have it, your DOT has been successfully staked and if you enjoyed this video and you learned something from it, please feel free to like, share and comment below. Now this channel is not monetized but it is supported by viewers just like you and those who are generous enough to donate. Please remember to subscribe so you can keep up to date with all the videos that I post and I thank you for watching.